Welcome back to Fusion 360 for Woodworkers. Today we're turning our attention to raised panel doors. If that sounds good, stick around. Hi, so welcome back. We're continuing the build out of our bookcase and today I want to look at the raised panel doors that make the cupboards at the end of our bookcase. Specifically, it's these doors here. And as you can see, it's classic raised panel doors. It's got this nice profile around the outside. It's got the panel raised. If you spin down the bottom here, we're using culp and stick joinery. It's just as you would make it inside the workshop. Now I always go to the efforts of actually modelling up the raised panel doors, including the styles and the rails and the cope and stick joinery, because it makes it easier when I come to the workshop activity, because all the material is sized out for me. I use parametric modelling, as always, so as I resize things, the door changes, so it's a very, very quick and easy way of doing this. So let's get straight into it and start to look at how we're going to make this door. So we'll start by modelling the door over here on the left hand side and once we've got the door created we'll just simply mirror over to the right hand side. Now I'm not sure about you but the more I put onto this bookcase the harder it gets to see things. With the pine rendering on here it's beginning to merge together. Uh, so I just want to make it a bit simpler to see the components. So I'm going to come down to the display settings here at the bottom, that television icon, click on the black arrow. I'm going to come to visual styles here at the top and I'm going to select shaded with visible edges only. And now you can see that just puts a black border on each edge and that just makes it a bit easier for me to see what I'm doing. Don't need to do that, a personal thing. Now as we've already seen, the door is a classic panel construction. So it's got styles that run down, it's got rails that run across and a raised panel that sits in the middle and the joinery is cope and stick. We're going to start our door construction by creating a single rail that runs down the full length of the bookcase is in the right position and is constrained as the bookcase resizes. So as always we're going to start with a sketch so into the create sketch panel and we're going to click on the front edge of this side panel there. So that now brings me into the sketch pane and it allows me to sketch on the front plane. I'm going to come in with a two point rectangle. I'm going to just make an arbitrary box like that and then we'll constrain it. So up to the collinear constraint. This edge I want to be on, make sure I pick up the right edge, that edge there. The bottom I want to be onto that edge there. And the top I want to be onto that edge there. Now I tend to make my styles and my rails 50 millimeters. So I've gone ahead underneath modify, underneath change parameters, I've just made this rail and style or style rails width parameter 50 millimeters. And that's so I can change it if I don't like the look of it. So I now want to make this that parameter. So I come into my sketch dimensions, select the top edge of this, pull it down and now we can make that style rails with return. So let's finish the sketch. Now we're going to make this the right thickness. Come into extrude, select that diagram and I'm going to pull it forward and we're going to pull it forward by stock thickness. I want to make a new component. New component. Okay. And now we've got the components 100 down here. Let's just give that a name and we're going to call that one rail. Simple as that. Now although this is constrained, so when I resize it it's always going to be the right size, it will always be that 50 millimeter width, it's set by the stock and it's always onto this edge. It's actually in the wrong place. I want my doors to overlap these panels ever so slightly and once we come to draw the draw front, so it'll be a very very quick activity, I want those to overlap as well. I want them to overlap by half of the stock width on either side and I want the edges of the door rails to line up with the edges of the draw fronts when I put them on. Now when I look at the draw fronts there's going to be a draw front here and there's going to be a draw front on this side here. I don't want those banging together. 
I want a two millimeter gap between the drawer front. So that means I need to work out where this is going to go. It's really quite easy. I want this to be halfway through the stock thickness minus one millimeters. So once I do the same thing, the drawer front halfway through the stock thickness minus one millimeter, same here will give me a two millimeter gap. So knowing that design feature, I can now go ahead and put this in the right place. Easiest way to do this and still retain that constraint against that side edge is to just use the offset command. So modify, offset the face. I want to offset that face. I want to offset that face. And I want to offset that face. I don't want to offset this edge just yet. I want to make it bigger, so I pull the arrow down and I know it's going to be a positive dimension. So I can now just put in here open brackets, um, stock thickness divided by two. So that's going to take it halfway across the stock, as you can see, nine millimeters. Then I'll allow for that two millimeter gap minus one. That now makes it eight millimeters. Perfect. So that has now set the position or the overlap of my door. Problem of rounder, of course, is this is no longer 50 millimeters. If we use the inspection tool and measure from that edge to that edge, it's 58 millimeters. So we now want to move this edge back by the same dimensions. So back into my modify tool, back into my uh, offset face, select the single face and move it back. So you can see straight away it's a negative distance. So minus stock thickness divided by two. And that gives me, you can't quite see it, can you? That gives me a nine millimeter gap well because it's a negative minus thickness i want to add a positive to that plus one and that gives me the eight millimeters offset i'm looking for so now when i come back to measure my rail that rail is now at 50 millimeters perfect so we've now got our first rail now the next thing i want to do is to start to look at the cope and stick joinery so i now want to put the cope and stick joinery down here I'm only going to do half of the joinery on this. I'm just going to put that curve, that nice profile curve on this edge. And the reason I want to do it now is I can, I'll just mirror this one. Once we've done all the hard work on this one, we'll just simply mirror it to this side and that makes it a lot quicker. So let's come in and work out how we're going to put the top profile on. We're going to start with a sketch. Sketch command, sketch on this end grain here, come in and have a a look. If you're familiar with cope and stick joinery or you've seen raised panels, you tend to get a nice profile that's got a flat edge, a step down, then a round over, and then a step out, and then down the edge again. And that's what I want to try and model here. So, we'll come in with a rectangle. Start in this corner here, I'm just going to drag this rectangle out to any arbitrary length and we're going to make this we'll try the joinery a third of the stock thickness and we'll try joinery there a third of the stock thickness and that looks good to me so we can escape it so i now want to put a round in here so we can come into the center diameter circle select that side of the square and drag that out now you can see that's 12 millimeters now that's actually joinery times two, because joinery was the stock thickness divided by three, if you remember from a very early episode. So I don't want it to be 12, because I want a slight step down, and I want a step down of one millimeter, but I want this to be, you know, model with the parameters. So we will make this joinery minus one millimeter return. <laughs> now you can see the mistake I've made there, because joinery is the radius that's now made that five millimeters and I wanted it out here. So I'm gonna edit that, double click on the five. It's actually open brackets, joinery times two, close brackets, minus one. Oh, it's all going wrong. Open brackets, <laughs> joinery times two, minus one. Okay, cool. And now you can see that's made that 11, which is um, a 12 millimeter diameter minus one millimeter. So I've got that step down in that profile that I'm looking for. Fantastic, finish the sketch. So I now want to take that 
profile and put it all the way down this edge. And we've done that before. We actually used a sweep command when we made the top of this bookcase, when we made this profile here, we used a sweep command. And we can do exactly the same again. So create sweep. Now, what do I want to sweep? So the profile is this very, very end here, that little blue block that we've just cut in. And the path is going to be here. And I want to cut that out, bang. So straight away, I've now got the bull profile with a step down um, that I'm looking for that's classic in cold and stick joinery. That's rather pleasant, isn't it? What I now want to do is to mirror this one across because I want to use this to actually size the rails. So let's go ahead and mirror this. Now remember a mirror needs two things. You need to tell it what you want to mirror and you need a point to actually mirror around. And the point to mirror around is set by a construction plane. So come into construct, come down to the mid plane, create a construction plane at the midpoint between two faces. And the two faces are this outside face here and this outside face here. And it gives us that orange construction plane that's in midpoint. Okay, so with that set, we can now come into create and mirror. Makes a mirror copy of selected faces, etc. We've used this before as well. So I want to mirror a component. So the component I want to mirror is that rail. And the point I want to mirror around is that orange plane we just made. And you can see that gives me a second instance of that rail. Okay, and it appears down here called rail mirror. So let's give these some identifiers. We're going to call you the left rail and we call you the right rail. And we'll just copy that. Okay, now the reason that I've mirrored that, even though I've not finished the joinery, because we need something to take the panel, is I want to use this to define the size of the panel and also the size of the rails that we'll have a look now. So I don't want this plane in the way, but never delete a construction plane. If you delete that plane, these will no longer be mirrored and it'll get confused when you resize things. But come up to construction up here in your sidebar, click on the eye to hide that last plane that you created. Good. Now we're going to come back into the sketch and we're going to sketch the rails. I'm only going to sketch the bottom rail and the middle rail because the top one will just be a mirror. So create the sketch, click on the face and now we're into here. Now as always we're just going to draw a random rectangle then constrain it. So let's come into the rectangle tool, random rectangle, click. Come into your collinear constraint and then select that face. And I want to select not, not the edge of the wood, but the edge of the profile. Do you see that snapping into the edge of that curve that we made? Right here, if I can do this, right there onto the edge of the profile, that's what I want to constrain to. And similarly, this edge, I want to constrain to that edge of the profile. And this bottom edge, I want to constrain to the bottom edge of the rail. Now that's put in there, the perfect length for our rail. And you know yourselves, if you made raised panel doors in the workshop, then you always need to make this piece long enough to allow for the cope and stick joinery. And that's automatically done that for us. And because it's constrained, as I resize the bookcase, that will also resize and give us the stock we need. Beautiful. You can see I've got this blue line up here, just to kind of escape from the constraint tool. So it's not got a data fixed dimension, so we need to sort that out into my sketch dimensions this little bar here oops sorry into my sketch dimensions this side piece here just needs some measurements and we're going to call that no surprises style and rail width done so that's core constraint and all in the right place i can finish my sketch i now want to come into extrude i want to extrude this and i want to extrude it down so it's a negative extrusion and that is going to be minus stock thickness now you can see it's gone red and you can see if we're not careful it's going to cut out that profile made, which is not what we want and fusion will always default to a cut if you're moving into another object so we want to come down and say i don't want a cut i want a new component okay 
Now that new component, we're going to give a name and let's just call this one bottom. Um, that's a, I'm going to call this one end rail. No, I'm not. I'm going to call this one bottom rail. Cool. Now I've just realised I've called these rails, so I'm going to rename the left one to left style and the bottom one to right style. Let's get the woodworking terminology correct. Perfect. So that's now where we need it to be. I want to put the profile on the end, so while we can remember how we did that, come into the bottom rail, come down and isolate. We're going to sketch, and we're going to sketch on the end, and it's this edge here. Bring our square in, put in the square, and we know that's joinery, and we know that's joinery. And we now know that we want to put the round in that, so we come to a circle. Select that point, stretch this across, and we know that that was joinery um, multiplied by 2 minus 1, was it? Yep, yeah, perfect. Cool, and now I can finish the sketch. We can now come back into the create and the sweep tool. It's a single path, it's this profile here and the path is that path there okay now i can right click on the bottom rail again and i can unisolate and you can start to see it's building up the profile of the door now it's not finished yet this um by any stretch of imagination because you can see we've not actually finished off the joinery you can still see the overlap here but we're going to come back to that in a second so the next thing I want to put in here is this center rail. So we'll come with a sketch, we'll click on the front edge here, we'll create a random rectangle somewhere in the right place, escape to out the rectangle tool, up to the collinear tool here, and we're now going to constrain this edge here to, once again, the profile edge, not the edge of the stock, the profile edge, this edge here to that profile edge, escape to come out of the constraint tool, come in in your sketch dimensions and this distance between that line and that line wants to be the style rails width, 50mm return. So that's now put that, but it's not constrained, look, we've still got these blue lines, if I press escape and grab a blue line, you can see that sliding up and down inside those rails, uh, inside those styles, sorry. Very nice, but not what we want. So I want to tell Fusion that this sketch has always got to be in the center point of these styles. And luckily we've got a constraint for that. And if we come up here, this triangle midpoint constrains a point or object to the midpoint of another object. So let's press escape so we're not selected anything. Select the triangle, and you can see I get a nice red triangle next to my cursor. Select this edge here, click, and then select the long edge of that profile there. And that then moves that into the center and gives you this triangle here indicating that's now in midpoint. And you can see my lines have gone black, so that's constrained. And that's constrained to the center point. So no matter how we resize this, that rail, that center rail will always be well in the center. Finish the sketch. I now want to extrude this so we can come into the extrude tool, I can click that face, and I want to push this back so you can see it's a minus distance that we need, and that distance is minus stock thickness. You can see the edges have gone red, so I know it's going to cut, so come over to the operation and select new component. Okay, gives me a new component, and we're going to call this one a center rail. Okay, perfect. I now want to put the profiles on this one, so let's just isolate that. Let's do a sketch and come into one end. And we need a square at that end. And we know that square needs constraining. I clicked too quickly, so that's got to be joinery. And we know that we want that one there to also be joinery. Perfect, and I want another square down here at this bottom face. 
and we know it wants to be joinery, and we know that wants to be joinery. Okay, I now come in with my circle in the bottom corner, drag it over to put my round in it, and we know we want that one to be joinery multiplied by two minus one millimeter. Cool, and then put a round in this bottom one. And we don't want that to be joinery multiplied by two minus one. So I've now got my two profiles on that center piece. Finish that sketch, come into the create, sweep command again. I want to sweep a profile, I want to sweep that profile, and I want to sweep that profile. My path is going to be across there, and you can see that now give me the two profiles. I want to cut, okay, done. Right click on the center rail component and on isolate. You can start to see how this is building up into that classic Copen stick joinery. What I now want to do is to put the center panel in place. And we're gonna start, no surprise, by a sketch. Sketch onto the front of the door. Uh, let's position that so we can see it. Now the panel is actually the same size as the inside edge of that profile. That's how your router bit would cut that. So let's use that to our advantage. Come with a rectangle, any rectangle you like, and then come in with the collinear constraint tool. Select the top edge to the top of the profile. Select the bottom edge to the bottom of the profile. Left edge to the left profile, and the right edge to the right profile. So we've now created a panel that's the right size for our cupboard, and it will also resize as we change parameters. Finish the sketch. Extrude the panel. We're going to extrude the panel backwards and it's minus stock minus stock thickness. It's gone red. I don't want to cut. Come in, create a new component. Okay. Give the component a name and we're going to call that component base panel. Happy day. So we've now got the panel in place there, but you can see it needs a bit of work on it. We now need to put some sort of profile around this, we need to raise the panel as it's called. So let's isolate that panel. Let's come down to this edge and draw da -da -da, a sketch. Now, if you look at a raised panel, what you have is you have a profile at the top that can be either just a simple chamfer or it can be some sort of fancy curve. And that's really driven by the router bit that you've got. And it also typically has a small back cut on it as well. And then that allows the panel to expand and contract inside the joinery. So we want to, to model that. So we're going to create, the first part of our sketch is gonna be the top profile, and the bottom part will just be um, the back cut. And then we'll sweep that round to give us the final thing. I'm gonna go for a curve. So to create that curve, I'm going to use the fit point spline tool we've used that before we use this to actually make the profile on the top uh, panel the crown and i'm just going to come in i'm going to say i'm going to draw the line from roughly there to roughly not quite center point see that arrow that triangle that's center point just slightly above center point probably about there and then i can left click on that tick to finish it you can see it's a straight line but you can see it gives me these two little green um, ball type things here. So I'll press escape to the tool. Now if I take that and I can now create the curve just by moving the position of that there. And you can get some quite fancy things. I just want something that looks like that. And I find if this little bar here is parallel to that curve there, it gives me a nice profile. So I'm actually gonna use a constraint for that. The constraint I'm gonna use is parallel. Constraints two lines so they extend in the same direction and never intersect, i.e. parallel. And I'll click, not, not, not on the green blob, but on the bar between the green blobs there and the top line there. That's now constrained it and you can see it gives me a nice profile curve and I can no longer 
change that. That's always constrained. I can move it back in two and change the length. I can move it up and down, but I can't change it out of parallel. So that defines that curve. Talk about that length. Now let's create a distance between here and here. And that distance, I think, is going to be joinery. Let's do it and have a look. So I click on the top edge, and I click on the blue bar and drag out as always. And let's just put in there joinery. Yep, and that looks good to me. And I think of as we resize this stock, a third of that stock is probably going to be a nice depth. Excellent. Now let's look at this top piece here. Um, Ooh, I don't know really. It's a uh, personal taste, this one. Oh, I think that's quite good. Yeah, so we're going to set it at that. So again, that's parallel to this. So let's use a constraint for that. Let's use our parallel constraint. I want you to be parallel to you. Okay, so that's now set that nice curve there for me. Um, I'm just looking at this distance here. Let's give that a constraint as well. The center of blob to that corner there, and we're gonna give that a constraint. That's 22, which is actually slightly longer than the stock. Um, I think we're gonna actually make this a definite parameter. I'm gonna make it 20, and it'll always be 20. So I don't think I want that to resize as the door resizes. This can resize as the thickness resizes, but that will always be 20 millimeters and I think that looks pretty good. Cool. So let's come in and do a back cut and let's make that 7.2. Let's turn that into joinery and I think we'll make this bottom one that 20 millimeters again. I don't want this corner to be quite that sharp so I want to round that corner off. We have a tool for doing that. I don't think we've used that before. We've certainly looked at it um, in the 3D modeling but not the sketch but if you look at modify here you've got this fillet tool, places an arc or a specified radius at the intersection of two lines. So let's click that. And it's that line and it's that line. And you can see that's now giving me a one millimeter. And you can select that arrow to give you, to give you whatever you want. And I think probably two millimeters looks about the sort of thing a router bit would give you. So there you go. So we've now got our profile there and we've got our profile there. So let's now finish our sketch. I now want to put that profile front and back all around the board. So guess what we can use to do that? If you said sweep tool, you'll be correct. Now I want to select the path first of all. I just find for some reason, if you select the profile, it makes it hard to select multiple paths. So we're going to do the path first of all. And I want to go down that edge, that edge, that edge. And that edge. And remember, that's just defining where the profile will run. So when I select the profile now, I can select that profile and that profile, and it will cut both out at the same time on that path. It looks messy, but when you do OK, look at that, you've got a beautiful raised panel door with a nice back cut inside it. And if you've made raised panel doors, you'll probably recognize that as reasonably good. I think. Okay, so click on the base panel and let's unisolate it and bring it back into its home. So you can now start to see you've actually created for yourself a raised panel door. We're nearly there, there's a few things left to do. I now want to cut the joinery for that raised panel door into the frame, i.e. that sort of um, mortise, I guess you'd call it, maybe a dado that sits around the inside of this. Now, for do that, we can use our old friend, the router tool, um, combine. So coming to the combine tool, the target body is going to be this left-hand style. My tool body is going to be the panel. I want to cut it out, but I want to keep the tool. Okay, right-click, repeat the combine. My target body is the top one. My tool body is the panel. Cut it out, but keep the tool. Right click, repeat combine. My target body is the left one. My tool body is the bottom one. My operation is cut, keep the tool. Okay. My target body is the bottom one. My tool body is the panel. Operation is cut, keep the tool. So we now uh, just turn off the base panel. We've now got 
that classic cope and stick joinery inside our frame. Nearly. Now, if you actually zoom in and look at this, obviously what this has happened, it's not cut all the way through. So I've not got that channel in the top of this. And also you can see it doesn't go all the way through. And that's pretty wrong. That's not going to happen. So I now want to complete that channel in these two outside styles. So I'm going to isolate those styles, highlight the left one, hold the shift, highlight the right one, and just now come down and isolate. So you can see what I mean. It's just put that in part of the, the equation. It's not put that absolutely everywhere. That's easy. We can just route this out now. So come into your extrude tool, click on that square. Make sure you just get the square and nothing else. You now want to go to a, um, sorry, you want to, I lost my train of thought. Your direction, sorry, your extent wants to be to an object and the object is the end grain of that. And you can see that's gonna cut that out for us, it looks good. Okay, and now I can come back into this end here, my extent tool, click on the cube, little square, and make your distance to the object into that place. Okay. And that's now cut out that channel all the way down. Just repeat on this one. Remember, a mirror doesn't make a copy, it makes a new component. So we just need to right click, repeat the extrude onto that one. The distance is to the object, which is the end of any of those two pieces. Okay, and then come back down into here. Right click, repeat extrude, little square. Distance is to an object, which is to that end. Okay. Highlight all those two again, right click and on isolate. Now as you come into the end here, you can start to see that we're getting that classic cope and stick joinery that really is synonymous with raised panels. I think that looks really, really pretty. We get that joint right and it's tight, it always looks really pretty to me. But it doesn't exist yet. We've not yet cut it in to these rails. So we can use the combined tool. So my target body is going to be the bottom and my tool body is going to be this left one here and that right one there. And you can see that's going to cut the profile. Cut, keep the tools. Okay, so we just take off those styles. You can now see um, we've now got that classic cope and stick joinery in our rails, all beautifully modeled, all the right size, and we'll resize as we change the parameters. Happy days. We'll do the same on the center one. So right click, repeat the combine. My target body is the center, and my tool body is this left one and this right one. Cut, keep the tool. Okay. So it's looking really good. Now I just want to now create the panel and the top rail and if you're ahead of me you know we can use the mirror command for this. So I need to place to mirror so we'll go to the construction plane using a midpoint plane and I want to mirror from that end there to that end there of the door. Okay and that now gives me that center point of that door. I can go to create, I can come into mirror and what do I want to mirror? Well, I want to mirror that bottom rail and I also want to mirror that panel. And I want to mirror around that point and there you go. We now have a raised panel door. I'm going to turn off that construction plane and I'm going to give these some names. Um, bottom rail mirror can now change to top rail that doesn't need the name mirror on it so we're just going to call those raised panels I think raised panel top and we will call this one um, I've lost it there you go raised panel base. Now the final thing I want to do is to mirror this door over to this far end, but we'll just glue it together I think. So we'll go to assemble, as built joint, and we just want a 
components a single simple rigid joint and we've used this before so I want that style glue to that rail okay I want to give me a rebuilt joint then I want that rail glue to that style okay then I want that center rail glue to that style okay and then I want this bottom rail glue to that style okay and then I want this center panel glue to that style although we wouldn't glue that in real life and then that panel glue to that style okay so that now is basically a glued up door position revert so we've got all that glue together and I just want to tidy this up so we're going to come to the top bootcase design and we're going to create a new component we're going to use a standard component internal to this design and we're going to call that door assembly and it's a parent we already selected the bootcase design and we want it to be active okay and we've got the door assembly and now we can create the um, left style right style bottom rail center rail raised panel top rail and raised panel and just move that into the door assembly good looking good final job for today mirror that over to this end we need a construction plane that needs to be the center of the cupboard so select a mid plane um, we'll do that edge to that edge okay it's giving me that set point plane I can now go into create and mirror uh, what do I want to mirror well that component there or that door assembly the better way of doing it around that center point happy days and then I get a new door assembly so we'll call that one door assembly left and we'll call this one cleverly door assembly right while we're here we may as well just give that the right appearance so we we'll right click up here and just bring up the appearance menu and we know that this is pine so we'll select pine just drag it onto the component and we'll drag that onto that component as well happy days Okay, so that's it for today. You now know how to make raised panel doors um, using cope and stick joinery. A lot easier than it looks, quite involved, but not too complicated. Nothing we've not done there before, I don't think. So I hope you found that useful. Next episode, I want to put some draw fronts on and I want to actually craft some pull handles that are going to complete our bookcase. I'll see you.